What's going on everybody? I hope you're all well. This week, I've made good on my promise, there's not a croissant in sight. Yes, this week we are making pineapple chutney. And why pineapple chutney? Well, I bought the pineapple because we have a huge heat wave here in the UK. I planned on making some nice refreshing slushies. And wouldn't you know it, as soon as I got that pineapple home, the temperature just went <laughs> dropped like nobody's business. So once that happened, I thought, why not save it for something better like this video? Right, boring story time over. Let's get on with the recipe. This pineapple chutney is pretty straightforward and takes little to no time to make. Obviously, the most important thing is the pineapple. I personally like to age mine after buying it just to develop the flavor of it, like you would let a banana ripen to make it sweeter. When cooking the pineapple, I normally leave it for a week or two until the outer leaves have dried out with a little green remaining at the top and the sort of tortoise shell looking skin looks dehydrated and gnarly. This is usually a good indication that the flesh inside the pineapple has dried out a little bit. Not only having a deep, delicious sweetness, but also developing this little tang as well that sort of balances the flavour in the pineapple, making it something really special. I think I'm taking this technique from working in the restaurants. I mean, you can take a pineapple like this and salt bake it or barbecue it and end up with some really stunning results. The more I talk about it, the more it sounds like chefy bullshit, but it's no joke. Try aging your pineapple before you eat it and let me know what you think. So top and tail your pineapple and using a sharp knife, carefully remove the skin from all the way around the outside, exposing this beautiful looking bright yellow flesh. You can see that we're not losing loads of juice from this pineapple as we cut it, and that's thanks to the aging. If this pineapple was fresh in the shop, our board would be soaking by now. If there are any eyes left in the pineapple, remove them. I think I've done a pretty good job here of not leaving anything behind. Then slice your pineapple all the way down to the fibrous core, which you can discard. Then using your sharp knife, cut the pineapple into small dice anywhere between a centimeter and half a centimeter big. To be honest, you can cut this chunky if you prefer, it's up to you. It won't really affect the end result. I just prefer mine in a nice small dice. Once all the pineapple has been diced, you can transfer it to a large saucepan. Then add 75 grams of light brown sugar, three tablespoons of white wine vinegar, a tablespoon of whole grain mustard, half a teaspoon of chili flakes. You can add more if you like, if you like it a little spicy. Then add a quarter a teaspoon of mixed spice and a pinch of saffron. A little side note, saffron is one of the most precious slash expensive spices in the world. And why is it so expensive? Well, the little saffron threads are actually stigma from a flower commonly known as the saffron flower. Each flower only has three saffron strands or stigmas each, and they only bloom for one week a year. And the saffron has to be harvested by hand, so individually picking out each of those stigmas, and it's usually done in the morning when the flower's still closed to protect them. I mean, it's a whole operation, and it takes about a thousand flowers to make just 30 grams of saffron, so you can understand why you're paying top dollar for this spice. So, add your saffron and make sure you give it a very elaborate sprinkle into the rest of the ingredients just to acknowledge how expensive it is. Then finally, you can peel and crush a large garlic clove, add it to the pan with half a teaspoon of salt. Then once all the ingredients are in the pan, place it over a high heat and bring the whole lot up to the boil, stirring all the time. The juice will be released from the pineapple, dissolving the sugar and allowing all the spices to disperse evenly. Then turn the pan down to a medium heat and continue to simmer, stirring from time to time until almost all of the liquid has evaporated. Now you don't want to cook this for too long, otherwise it's just going to end up sticky and chewy, unless that's your sort of thing. But I would recommend once you can draw a line through it, it's ready to go. By a line, I mean you should be able to drag your spoon or spatula through the pineapple and the liquid shouldn't come flooding back in to fill that gap. If it does, you need to cook it a bit longer. But if it looks like this, you're good to go. Once ready, place it into sterilized jars. I did this just by washing the jar out, pouring in some boiling water from a kettle, and then finally drying out in a hot oven. And this jar is way too big for the amount of chutney here, so let's try this again. Much better, far more satisfying to have a jar filled up to the top. Seal the jar and then leave it to cool. Then you can store this in the fridge for up to three weeks. Sweet, spicy, tangy, fruity. This little chutney is the perfect addition to pies, terrines, cold cuts, 
Unfortunately, I didn't have any of these to demonstrate that with, but fortunately enough, I did have a little bit of cheddar in the fridge, which this pineapple chutney also goes amazingly well with. So if you use your imagination and pretend this is an incredible cheese board and that this cheddar is on a delicious artisan cracker, you'll probably have a good idea of just how delicious this chutney is. And that's it, a super simple, incredibly delicious, spicy pineapple chutney. And if that cheese board's anything to go by, we've got to be onto a winner, right? Thank you so much for watching, I really appreciate it. If you like this recipe, let me know by hitting that thumbs up button. And if you're gonna give it a go, let me know in the comments. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't done already. And if you're interested in more recipes, you can always go and check them out on my channel or head over to my website, albrady.co.uk. If you wanna know more about the equipment I use, you can always head over to my Amazon store. I keep all of my favorite kitchen toys there. I'll leave a link in the description down below. Also, reach out to me on Instagram. I love to see what you guys are getting up to. I will see you in the next one.